a tumultuous election year. The United States grapples with coast-to-coast -coast protests, a pandemic crisis, and major economic woes. Two-thirds of American voters say the country's on the wrong track. We'll get perspective now from one of my favorite people, one of the nation's top bolsters, political consultant and master of messaging, Frank Luntz, who joins us from Los Angeles. Frank, a new CBS News poll finds 67% of Americans say the United States is on the wrong track. Another poll indicates Americans are more unhappy now than they've been in 15 years. Does that mean Biden's gonna be elected? It's certainly not good news for Donald Trump. And it certainly demonstrates exactly why the Trump campaign has become so nervous, while Trump himself has criticized polling. But I would say to the president, if I was sitting in front of him right now, don't criticize the numbers. Understand what's happening out there. Donald Trump's job approval rating is in the low 40s. His favorability rating is in the low 40s. His numbers had gone up at the very beginning of the virus. But over the last 90 days, they have fallen. Why? Because of his language, because of his messaging, because of his presentation. The American people want empathy. They want understanding. They want to know that the people in charge care about them. It's not just law and order. It's not control of the streets or the word domination. For the average American, they want peace of mind. They want a job. They want to be able to put a little bit of money away. They want their politicians to get something done. And what they look now in Washington, and the Democrats are doing that, not doing that well either, Larry, that right now everyone in Washington is getting cursed out because they don't know who to trust on COVID-19. They don't know who's going to fix the economy. And they certainly don't know who's going to bring social justice. Recently, you tweeted that in my 35 years of polling, I've never seen opinion shift this fast or deeply. How did that happen? It happened because we saw it on TV and we saw it on the web and it was brought to us morning, noon and night. We read about it in newspapers. Every way that we collect information, we realized that we were not the country that we thought we were. We are still inherently good. We are still inherently a just country, but we have not treated everybody justly. Larry, I've gone through an opinion change over the last few weeks and last few months. And I'm not surprised that so many people have said enough is enough. The question now is, who do you trust to fix it? How far are we going to go? And probably most importantly, can we maintain the principles of equality and freedom at the same time? Because that's what we're based on, the chance that everyone has an equal opportunity, not necessarily an equal result. I don't know if we're ever going to get there, but our society is going to change a lot over the coming months. Go Doesn't ahead. Biden represent that more than, than Trump? All the yeah, things actually, you just mentioned. Actually, in, in all due candor, Joe Biden is one of the most emotional speakers of my lifetime. One week ago, I sent around the single best video I have ever seen in, in my life. And it's Bobby Kennedy. You've, I know you've seen it. Four and a half minutes long. And he talks about the assassination of Martin Luther King a few hours earlier. And Bobby speaks with such beauty and such warmth and such love and understanding and empathy. And Joe Biden comes from that same school. The question, and this is all part of who he choose for president, the question is whether Biden is the same Joe Biden today that he was when he was vice president four years ago or when he was a candidate for president 12 years ago. Because in the end, we're not voting for someone just on election day. We're voting for someone for the next eight years. Now, I don't like it when people make fun of, of his age. My mom had dementia and I went through this with her and I know how much it upset her when people would ask her what's wrong. I, I don't know with Joe Biden, I, I, it bothers me when some cable news programs make fun of him or make light because people forget. But 
the public does want to know, is he capable at the age of 78, is he capable of four years as president? It is a legitimate question, but boy, he's got the biggest heart of any candidate who ran this time. And he is so empathetic. And I'm gonna tell you something I've never admitted. I had a stroke, I think you know this, five months ago, and I saw Joe Biden after that stroke twice, and he gave me a hug that was so kind and so warm. And he held me up and he talked about me. I mean, it, it stopped the event cold. And everyone who was there to shake his hand and vote for him were pissed off at me because I'm holding the whole event up. Mm. But Joe wanted to talk about my health and my safety and my condition. And not many politicians would have done that. And I'm grateful that he did it. He is a good, good man. He is. But he made still, a great speech on coronavirus the other day. Great speech. Yes, and and uh, but but we have the right to ask: Is this someone who will go the distance? And I think it's a legitimate question. I've I've asked it. I think it's a legitimate question. Actually, let me ask you. I'm going to turn the interview around for one second. Is it legitimate for us to ask? Is Joe Biden ready for four years? Is that fair? I guess it is. We've got no choice. <laughs> yeah. How do you explain that the impact in that killing in Minneapolis traveled greater than the killing of Martin Luther King Jr.? There more That's talk that. about that than the other case. Explain that. Yes, that is, yes, that's going to be the best question I get probably all week. And viewers won't know that I held up this interview for about 20 minutes because I was with members of the police here in L.A. I wanted to meet them. I wanted to challenge them. I wanted to listen and learn from them. And this is what I do. I try to collect information and ideas and opinions and experiences for those that we don't normally hear. And Larry, I would suggest I've got a couple of people that might be great on your show. The reason why this went so wide, number one is it was on video. It was recorded. Number two is that it was so brutal and so indefensible because we saw that this man was not a threat to anyone. There's no reason for this. Number three is that we've had crimes like this too often. And I know that people talk about the statistics of black on black murder and how much greater it is. One crime, one death, one tragedy like this is too many. And the, and the black community said enough is enough. But I'm going to answer, give one more answer that Black Lives Matter probably doesn't appreciate, but it is true. The white community said enough is enough. Back in 1968, civil rights was primarily a black issue. In 2020, civil rights is a black issue, a Latino issue, an Asian issue, uh, an Anglo issue. And because many of us are concerned about it today, and not just civil rights, not just about race, but also about income and about our social fabric. Because of that, we paid so much attention to this and frankly, it's it's why it changes are going to come. I know Donald Trump 40 years. I had no idea he had this lack of empathy. How do you explain that? He seems to have no empathy. He so I was very critical in a tweet and I and I should explain it. And this is a good show to do it on where I was critical that he used the words law and order. He is assuming that we have the same politics as 1968. And I think you covered this. I believe you covered the 68 convention. The Democratic convention is unlike anything we have ever seen. And Larry, at some point, you're going to let me turn the tables on you because I want to know your great stories. Your viewers want to know the things that you have experienced and those things that stand out. But what in 68, they had a law and order campaign, but they didn't use those words. And Richard Nixon won that election because of the so-called silent majority. Well, if you call them the silent majority, they're not silent anymore. That Donald Trump doesn't realize that you can govern in a strong, stable, successful way and still use language 
that is warm and kind and empathetic. He thinks that you have to communicate tough because you have to govern tough. And I'd say to you, it's exactly the opposite. We want to know people who understand us and who empathize with us. That's, and we don't want to hear someone who talks about dominating the streets. And my proof, Larry, of this is that Trump numbers have gone down over the last two weeks. No. He uh, used this week to issue an executive order to take another dig at the Obama administration. He constantly slams Obama. Is that, is that going well for him or not? No, I, I believe that his actual record is stronger than what people give him credit for. And I believe that he gives the media the ammunition to turn his own words against him. I really do believe that the economy before COVID was the strongest economy of my lifetime. We had a 3.5% unemployment rate. I was taught in school that the unemployment rate for America was 5%. Remember, you never get it below that. And under Donald Trump, it's the lowest it had been in 50 years. The lowest unemployment rate for African-Americans, for Latinos, the, the greatest wage increases in decades. No matter how you measure it, the economy before COVID-19 was so strong and he got no credit for it. Why? Because his messaging was undermining his governing. And I know that this is a show about substance, not about style. But Larry's style does matter in politics. And Trump would take this as such a huge insult if he saw it, but it's not. It's simply saying to him, the reason why you're not getting credit for all that you have done is not just because the media doesn't like you. It's because what you say isn't likable. How you say it isn't likable. You are speaking to the 40% that are your core base, and you are alienating the 40% who are against you. And the reason why you're losing now, doesn't mean you're going to lose, but the reason why you're losing now is that undecided vote, 6% of America actually approved of a lot of what you did, but they don't like how you say it. And they're going to vote against you unless you change your message.